Here's a Westinghouse model WR209 wooden cased tube type radio from probably the mid 1930s. This radio will receive standard AM broadcast as well as short wave bands. I bought this radio from somebody off of the antique radio forum who bought it at a swap meet somewhere and they were planning on restoring it but they never got around to it so they offered it for sale on the antique radio forum and and I decided I'd give it a shot so this is in a wooden cabinet finish is a little worn on top but it's not my concern right now getting it operational is my concern this is a five tube set it uses a power transformer and looks like a decent sized speaker up in there. And there's the model label tag with the uh, tube chart on it. And I can tell that someone has worked on this radio fairly recently. The, this power cord is obviously not original. And neither is this antenna wire. But I'm going to resist the temptation to plug this in because I don't know what's under the chassis. And it's always a good idea that when you find one of these old radios, even if the power cord looks good, you don't plug it in. Because the old capacitors that were used back when these radios were made are very troublesome and they can short circuit and burn out an expensive part like a power transformer so it's just best not to plug these in until you've done basic service work to the chassis because it would be a shame to take a radio that could be restored for electronically for 10 or 15 bucks and get carried away and plug it in and let the smoke out and end up spending 75 or 80 or 100 dollars for a transformer if you could even get a transformer like what was originally in the radio so just look at it like this it's it's been sitting unused for decades it can wait a little while till you check it out so okay with that said let's pull the chassis and see what we've got and like I said I have no idea what I'm gonna find here someone may have already recapped this radio so let's find out so the first thing you have to do is remove the knobs. In this case, the knobs just slide on over the shaft. In other radios, you have a set screw that must be removed. And once you do that, you remove the bolts on the underside of the cabinet. And the chassis should just, should just slide out. And I can see here that the chassis bolts, two of them are, are missing. <coughs> Excuse me. And the other two have been replaced with more modern looking screws, so let's see what we got here. Okay, here's the chassis removed from the cabinet. There's our speaker, of course the tuning dial, power transformer here, audio output transformer. These are your two electrolytic filter capacitors. This is your an IF transformer. This is our oscillator mixer tube, IF amplifier tube, detector first audio amp and AVC tube, audio output tube, and rectifier tube. Now let's have a look under the chassis. Okay, it looks like it still has most of its original capacitors in it. In fact, the only thing that I can really see that's obviously been done to this radio is the power cord has been replaced and and I see this more modern filter capacitor right here that someone soldered in. It looks like something out of a modern TV chassis and here's an old cardboard paper tube filter cap that someone soldered in. Let's see if we can see what value capacitor they put in here. I bet they put something way too big in here. Okay, not as bad as I thought. 47 microfarad at 450 volts. 
but we're going to try to do a better job of this. Look at this. Look at this. This wasn't even soldered good at all. All I had to do is twist it in the uh, solder connection just broke loose where they had the ground solder right here so something I run into a lot with these old radios is bad soldering by previous repair technicians but I'm just thankful that this radio is no more botched up than what it is I mean it could be very very bad believe me I've seen it all over the years Okay, here's another no-no that I've spotted. Take note of this yellow cardboard tube filter capacitor that was probably installed in this radio sometime in the 50s or 60s, maybe early 70s. There's really no way of knowing. But take note of what they did. They paralleled the good capacitor across the old bad electrolytic capacitor. Now I realized back then that it was common practice to do that and that practice was even suggested in many repair books but it's really not a good idea because if the old capacitor becomes leaky or shorted then you've got trouble you've got a short in the circuit it doesn't matter that you've got a good capacitor across it if this old capacitor were to short that is effectively placing a short circuit across this new capacitor. So always disconnect the, the original capacitor. And that way there's no chance of it becoming shorted or leaky and causing serious problems. Next thing I need to, we need to address, notice all these brown tubular things. There's several of them in this radio. These are called paper capacitors and they are very prone to trouble. It's important that every one of these brown tubular paper capacitors be replaced with more modern capacitors that are that are far superior to what these capacitors ever were and more modern capacitors should last another 50 or 60 years and still be just as good as they were the day they were installed. Okay, and here's my capacitor stash, and I've got some more on order, by the way, because I'm running low in some values, but this is what a modern capacitor looks like. It's virtually immune to moisture and humidity and, and other things that cause the original paper, wax paper capacitors to fail. So like I said, these newer capacitors are much more superior or highly superior to the original capacitors that were in the radio. Okay, there's one other thing I need to show you real quick. Okay, before I get in involved with recapping a radio like this, I would at least like to know if the power transformer is good. So the way I do that is remove the rectifier tube, connect our AC voltmeter across the high voltage winding, Turn the power on. It looks like we're getting about 638, 40 volts, which I'm okay with. I just like to make sure the power transformer is not totally fried in these sets before I invest a lot of effort into them. Okay, let's continue with this. 